Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at we're going to start looking at using Scene Builder to build JavaFX applications. In the last tutorial, we created this little Hello World application that just pops up an empty frame like this, and we're going to modify this. I'm going to use Scene Builder to build an extremely simple user interface that will simply show an image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click this project and go to copy and then click the this blank area in, blank area in Eclipse and I'm going to go to paste and let's call this introducing scene builder there we go so we've got a new project and I'm just going to close this hello world thing so that I don't get confused with it right click and go to close project and uh, so we've got one source file at the moment and I'm actually I'm going to put that in a package uh, and I won't create like proper package names like com dot programming dot you know all that kind of thing because it gets uh, a bit tedious navigating through them in tutorials so I'm just gonna create a, a package that I'm just gonna call I'm gonna right click the project go to new package and I'll just call this um, main I think for the moment just give it a really simple name and I'm just going to drag my app.java into main there we go now uh, I need another package here so I'm going to right click the project again go to new package and I'm going to call this uh, probably let's call it F fxml because I'm going to put fxml um, uh, xml files in there that will that will basically contain the design of our user interface. So let's click Finish. And now I'm going to right click that package, the FXML package, and go to New Other and browse down to New JavaFX, New FXML document. Click Next and I'll call this um, Main with a capital M because these apparently, these F, um, FXML documents should start with a capital letter. So I'll, I'll just arbitrarily give it the name main. You can make up what you want really, but I'll give it a capital M. Click finish. And uh, so this, this, is, this specifies the design of our user interface, but um, I'm not gonna design it by hand, at least not in this tutorial. I'm gonna use the scene builder application to design this. So I'm gonna go over to scene builder here. And uh, when you start scene builder, um, at least in version 1.1, which this is, uh, it often you just see a really tiny thing in the, in the middle somewhere here like that. But you need to just sort of tease that apart, and and what it should look like. Let's make it a decent size. Is you know something like this. And um, if you look on the on the left here, we've got under containers, we've got like a, a list of different widgets and layout managers we can use. Uh, different controls and so on, shapes, charts, and uh, under that we've got hierarchy, which shows the hierarchy of widgets here. So, like um, an anchor pane could contain a button, for example. Uh, uh, so, the button would be underneath it in the hierarchy. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just use an image view, just to put an image on this anchor pane. What the anchor pane is, it's a it's a container that allows you to um, lay out controls by anchoring them to the edges of the anchor pane. So I'm going to look for image view in here. There it is. And I'm just going to drag it onto the anchor pane. And you should see it on, like indented a bit under anchor pane in the hierarchy to show that image view is contained by the anchor pane. Now I need an image to use here. Uh, so what I'll do is I've got this image of a cat it's actually my um, my sister's cat and I'm going to go to Eclipse and I'm going to in FXML here in this package I'm going to right click that package and go to new package and I'm going to create a package called FXML dot images so that, that's going to create a sub package called images within the FXML package and I'll click finish and then I'll drag this cat into the um, FXML images package and I'll select copy files so it'll look like that. You can use uh, Explorer or Finder on the Mac uh, to um, to drag to like copy your image into the right directory. If you want to know by the way where your 
actual project file is located if you right click it in Eclipse right click the project go to properties resource that's where your project is located so you could copy an image into the appropriate subdirectory of this project it will be like um, introducing scene builder slash source slash fxml slash images but then you must remember if you do that to right click the project and go to refresh so that you can actually see it um, if you drag things in like from the desktop or wherever then Eclipse refreshes automatically and here it is now I'll go back to scene builder and um, I'm gonna make sure the image view is selected in the hierarchy here and then on the right here here's the inspector where we can expect properties of our different components so I, I assume that scene builder is going to change um, I think there's already a preview of version 2 out but all user interface designers that I've seen basically look something like this you've got like a hierarchy and a list of controls and you've got properties that you can inspect so um, hopefully it's not going to change too much and I'm going to go to um, uh, properties here under inspector we've got properties layout and code and I've got image view selected and I'm going to expand properties and here we can browse for an image so I'll just click this browse button and I'll go to that directory in Eclipse let's make sure that we've got the the right directory actually so that should be in documents and uh, documents work I think I created yeah work Java FX workspace one introducing scene builder and uh, source FXML images and there's my cat so I'll click open and I'm just going to expand this let's make the let's select the anchor pane root to make that fairly big like that then click the image view and then the little resizing handles appear on that and we can expand that to fill the whole thing actually one thing that I'll also do is with image view selected I'll go to properties in the inspector and untick preserve ratio because I want to be able to make this cat fill the entire space so now I can make it I can resize it and make it fill the whole anchor pane here and uh, then if you um, with uh, still with image view selected if you look at the layout section here you can here lay this out in the anchor pane this cat is actually alive according to my sister although it looks like it's been dead for at least three months but apparently it's not desiccated so don't worry about that but here in the um, anchor pane constraints for image view because the image view is, image view is in an anchor pane we can click these lines, these light lines, and they, they sort of toggle red. And uh, if if you've got a red line, let's take this top one for, exa for example, that means the top of this control, the image view, will always be anchored naught pixels from the top of the anchor pane view here. And if these aren't all naught, then you can just change them to naught because we want it to fill the whole anchor pane. But you could you could say, for example, that you want the left hand side of the image view to always be 20 pixels you know from the um, from the left hand side of the anchor pane but we don't want that because it looks unsightly so there we go uh, so the anchor pane it just lets you anchor the image the edges of your control to the edges of the anchor pane a fixed distance by toggling these anchors unfortunately uh, it doesn't seem to work too well with images because the images don't resize at least in the version that I'm using. I think I did get that to work by using a grid view or something but for the moment I'm not gonna worry about that. Now once you've designed your user interface here using buttons or whatever you like and just an image in this case if you press if you go to preview whoops let's select Java FX scene builder if you go to preview and show preview in window then you can preview what your application should actually look like or um, I think it's Control P on Windows. I'm on a Mac, so it's if I press Command P, that does the same thing there, and that's what our application is going to look like. So let's tick that off for a minute. Now uh, the next two steps are very very important, 
I'm going to go to file and save. And um, oh yeah, <laughs> what I meant to do actually was I meant to open this main.fxml file that I created in Eclipse, but it doesn't it doesn't matter because it's just a basic file anyway. So what I'll do is I'll just in Scene Builder I'm just going to save over that. So I'm going to um, save in my fxml folder so you have to browse to your project folder and save it over the one that you created well what you can do is um, sometimes I, I create I create this in Eclipse and then just open it in scene builder main.fxml or whatever you like to call it um, or you can create it in scene builder and just save it into the right folder in Eclipse it actually really doesn't matter but the important thing is that um, it must be saved and um, you must then right click your project in Eclipse and go to refresh or use the shortcut key which is F5 and then if you double click it in Eclipse you should see the latest changes that you made so obviously now if, if I wanted to edit this more and Scene Builder was closed I'd open up Scene Builder and I'd then open this file in Scene Builder and then edit it then I'd save it in Scene Builder and refresh my project to see the latest changes. So you have to make sure that you're seeing the latest changes in Eclipse, otherwise it, it's not going to be good. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to tell our, tell our project to use this fxml file. Uh, so to do that I'm going to go to my main package, app.java, and I'm going to get rid of this group root node and I'm going to create a root node which I'll use I use the parent class, I'll call it root again and I'll set that equal to fxml loader dot load and the value that I'm going to supply to load here for fxml loader is going to be get class to get the class object just associated with this app class we could use any class for this and get resource which is what we want and for get resource I'm going to supply the string forward slash and fxml because that's my package name fxml then forward slash and the name of the FF, um, fxml file which is main.fxml in this case so that's gonna get us the fxml file and then we're gonna load it and return it as this parent root node which we're passing to scene so I'm going to just do Control shift o to add the import for parent there. This does seem like completely um, bizarre and um, strange when you first see it, but if you just practice typing this stuff out a few times, playing with it a little bit, you'll get the hang of it really quickly. It's, it's not so complicated. Now I'm going to do a save all and I'm just going to run my project as normal. And there we are, it's a picture of a cat. Now this, this can be resized and there's a big white border around it so to fix that I'm just gonna go to my primary stage here which we saw in the last tutorial primary stage and I'm gonna say dot set resizable false because I can't figure out how to make this resize at least using an anchor pane in a nice way so I'll stop it resizing and I'll also look at scene builder and if I look at my image view and layout here we can see that it's 452 by 367 pixels. So let's go to Eclipse and for the size here in the scene let's type 452 by, uh, was it 367? 367 and save that and so now it's not resizable and it should be a good size and there we go, there's our final application. One last thing to do because if we double click main.fxml you see we're using a um, absolute file path so if we try to deploy this application, you know, um, we're going to lose that file. It's going to be in a different location relative to the application and it won't work. What we need to do is, um, let's just maximize the editor here. Um, my, my file is actually in the F FXML folder and that's where the FXML f file itself is. That's where this file is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all of this stuff in the URL here by an ampersand. 
because that specifies that the following location is relative to this file. So this file's in the FXML folder. In fact, I'm gonna to have to delete FXML as well. Yeah, because the images package is a sub package of FXML. So the actual folder, if we were to go and browse and look at the disk within the FXML folder where this file is located, within that, there's gonna be an images folder and that's gonna contain cat.jpg jpeg so i'm going to use the ampersand and a relative location for the image and if we save that whoops and yeah scene builder is asking me if i want to reload it and i do so i'll just click reload uh, so let's save it and then run the project again and check that it still works so there we go that's it for this tutorial i swear that cat is alive and not dried and in the next tutorial we're going to create a application that has uh, just a simple button um, that we can click and actually make it do something. So join me again then. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, um, don't forget to subscribe. And also, if you go to www.caveofprogramming.com, um, do consider subscribing to my mailing list uh, for discounts and uh, information about future stuff. So until next time, happy coding. <laughs>